Yes, yes, indeed. Radio Freedom. We play what music we want. We talk about what we want, and we welcome you to do the same. Hey, we're always taking your request for Conscious Cut of the Day. We are always taking your commentary on the front page, 520-KJLH, 520-5554. And we are always having these conversations on social media well past the 6 o'clock hour of uh, the end of front page at Radio Free KJLH on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. You can find me at Deprima Radio, D-I-P-R-I-M-A. And then Radio, we have a YouTube channel, Radio Free TV. That's where the podcasts of all of the KJLH shows are. That's where you can find uh, formerly different days of front page. And my YouTube channel is Dominique B. Deprima. The B is for Baraka, of course. I'd love to have you subscribe to both uh, KJLH and mine. And get some some of this video content. Okay, so Fixico brought up some amazing points about the founding of this country. And the Atlanta Black Star has a chilling story about 28-year-old Cody Richard Griggers. He is a deputy, a sheriff's deputy in Georgia. And he was found caught bragging uh, in emails about beating up black people for stress relief. This is how he got his stress relief. Um, And he says in the email that he will charge as many black people as possible with felonies in order to take away their ability to vote. This isn't an FBI affidavit. He's been now fired from uh, Cody Richard Griggers is his name. He was fired in November from the sheriff's department after the fbi contacted the sheriff about an investigation ironically he was arrested uh, or charged i should say with having illegal guns and making violent political statements on social media not beating up black folks and trying to charge them with unknown felonies just so they couldn't vote um he's actually in detention i guess he's in custody but he's in custody because he was is taking weapons, um, some weapons from the department that were supposed to be law enforcement only. And he said he was going to use them in training, and then he kept them. And when they went to his house, they found machine guns. With the, uh, They found all kinds of weaponry in his police car. He had a machine gun with the serial number wiped out. All of this is to say, not to be scary, because to Jeanette's point, We got to focus on what we want, not what we don't want. The what we want here is that he's off the force. The what we want here is that the FBI, under the leadership of Merrick Garland, starts getting serious about getting these white supremacists out of these departments. And um, hello, we can we start over here uh, with the L.A. County Sheriff's Department. Um, This is serious business. The FBI's own report is what, well, two different reports by the FBI over the years, is what pointed out to us that there was this infiltration and it was confirmed for us by January 6th, domestic terror attacks, the number of white supremacists, um, people who were also a member of law enforcement agencies and also even some fire departments. This guy was a group of a, a, a member of the group called Shadow Moses, which I'm not familiar with, but apparently it is an extremist group. So I wanted to tell that story in response to what Fixico was talking about, because when we talk about institutional racism, yes, it's baked into the actual institutions themselves, and it's also present in the individuals. Let's go to Derek, calling us from Colorado. Good morning, Derek. How are you doing, uh, Danielle? I mean, I mean, Dominique. I'm sorry. Okay, I uh, won't Dominique. call you Darren if you don't call me Danielle. <laughs> Well, I, I, I apologize, okay? I'm just playing a dare. Not a big deal. Okay. Well, anyway, we had that, and we just passed that uh, Police Accountability Act. It's working so well. So, so well. It's working so far. They've had some of the police officers who, who quit because they can't uh, deal with the fact they don't have qualified immunity anymore. They said they're having time recruiting. Somebody said that's a good thing because now, uh, now we don't have to deal with the police. But... Uh, it, it, but when you have these uh, uh, police accountability bills and everything, they're going to be twerked every so often. It's recently, it just had, uh, they just had—they showed it three times. This person wasn't black, but this person was an elderly uh, white lady. She was seven three years of age. She had dementia, 
And uh, she she went out the store and she was she had fourteen dollars worth of groceries. They tackled her to the ground. I mean, they broke her arm. They took her to the the jail and everything else like that. You can see the person is uh, doesn't even know where they are, and all she knows is uh, uh, she's just staring and staring. And the dentist officers and not know the quit so they got to redo that law and when they quit can they be rehired and that way they have it right now if they they get fired they can't uh uh re- so they're going to redo that on the on the state level here yeah oh, that's and maybe smart california, yeah and maybe uh california could do the same thing because uh, i spoke to some people in some other states and uh, you guys are basically a democratic uh uh, state as far as uh, both uh, your assembly and your yeah, Derek, uh, we are we have super majority, but the problem is that the police unions uh, s- support a lot of politicians, Democrats and Republicans, with their donations. And I think we'll get there, but we've had a couple of those bills that have already failed, including one by Steve Bradford uh, to to modify the police officers' bill of rights, which is where. Uh, one of the ways that qualified immunity is enshrined in our state. I think you're right. We need something similar to what Colorado has. It'd be nice to have it on a national level. I bet you those cops that quit your force came over here, probably work for the LAPD or the LA County Sheriff's now, or some little All I know is agency. that, uh, all I know is I've heard some people talk about a whole bunch of other things. Some people even talked about taking half their uh, pensions from them or taking their pensions away from them. I don't know how this is going to work out. But uh, they, as you know, if they get fired from the job, they don't get the pension. If they resign, they will get their pension. So, I mean, these, these type of things are, it's always a work in progress. And they have the same thing. They don't even choke codes. Uh, they have their body cameras. And the thing about these officers, they were had their body cameras and they were laughing at the lady when they were. Uh, yeah, I saw that. Uh, that was horrifying. And, and if you're going to treat, you know, an elderly lady like that, how are you, how will you treat a, you know, a black teenager? That's my question. Yeah, but, that's but, what I think. I mean, that's what he was just saying. Another thing they were saying is uh, as more and more people get older in this uh, country, that's one thing they're going to look at is uh, dementia, things like that. Now, this of course, illness, they have but, to be trained to deal dementia. with dementia. They have to be de- trained to deal with autism. And, and a lot of those stops shouldn't even have cops. If it's not life-threatening, you know, if it's a, an elderly lady with dementia, maybe you do need an elder care, someone from the senior department or, you know, someone, right. a, f- a medical person who is qualified and well-versed in how to deal with people in that state. The thing about the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act that I do think is important is one of the things is the National Registry so that those cops can't just bounce around if they get fired from one place. If they have 22 complaints against them like Chauvin did, they just can't go and and join the Culver City Police Department or some little police department in, you know, in a surrounding area, which is what happens all the time now. Yeah, they have a, like a uh, database here, and they said that database won't be. Uh, these things are really kind of like labor intensive. Uh, I mean, as far as uh, time and everything else like that, but they're. I mean, it's, yeah, well, so uh, is burying your yeah. loved ones. I mean, you know, so I, I understand. I understand, but I think gotta, that's you, get, you know, let's and that's when we talk about defunding police. That's the kind of thing we're talking about. Take some of that money that you're spending on military equipment that shouldn't be in civilian policing and spend it on people to maintain a database to track problem cops. How about that? Derek, it's great to talk with you. I appreciate the call all the way from Colorado. Going to Anonymous uh, from East L.A. Good morning. Good good morning, uh, Dominic. Uh, I wanted to mention uh, that, you know, that we we got them uh, sheriffs over in South L.A. who've been killing uh, uh, black people and brown people. Um, and a lot of them are actually in East assigned. LA too. Oh uh, yeah, and East LA exactly with the uh, banditos, and they've been killing a lot of uh, brown people in East LA also. And it's being done by brown by by brown officers, uh, Latino Hispanic officers. Those guys need to get flushed out of the department also, because their mind has already been uh, tainted and it's been brainwashed. Uh, by the white Nazi officers that are and gang members that are actually in the department, and so they their their mind has already been poisoned 
and they think they're white uh, supremacist, and then they start, you know, supposedly they're supposed to, in order to join the club, the Nazi club over there in, in the south, in the south, uh, the sheriff's department of South LA. Uh, they got to kill someone, and and I think that's what one of the things that happened uh, with the kid over in Hawthorne or Gardena uh, about five, what six months ago or something. Andres Guardado, is that who you're talking about? Yes, yes, uh huh, him, and uh, another guy in the, in the Maravilla projects there in East LA. Uh, the kid wasn't doing anything, and they just swept up on him. They just came into the, into the housing project, and they actually just blasted him, killed him for no reason. And uh, you know he was just mm-hmm. a young guy. You know there. You know he was just there in the in, in the in the projects. He wasn't okay, doing Okay, anonymous wrong. from East LA. I I'm going to uh-huh. make a jump an assumption here, but you have the California Latinx uh, accent. Are you Latin? Your Latinx yourself, Latino? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh, I'm like I am. So yes, so ha- so when I'm, you I'm, see I'm I'm, uh, I'm, I'm Chicano. Okay, Chicano, right. That's what I mean by the California <laughs> Latin. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Chicano. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, that was the old, that was back in, you know, that those groups of uh, people were, you know, they were real active back in the 60s and the 70s and standing up for uh, equal justice and equal rights, you know, and uh, and and followed uh, Martin Luther King's, uh, um, you know, his, what he wanted everything to be. Uh, equality and equal, and uh, so yeah, that was those. You know, that, that's so I'm glad you said that because I was going to ask you to define Chicano, and I think you just did. Um, yes. <laughs> so, yeah. as a Chicano coming from out of the movement, how do you how do you reflect? Because we do have, we're starting to see more division between black and brown in this last 20 years uh-huh. um, in LA, especially. And I think the what you mentioned about latin latino cops killing black folks and killing brown folks is making that worse what do you say about that how do you receive that what can you share with us that can help us understand what's going on in that in that regard well i think they should be also treated just like the white uh uh sheriffs that are actually the white supremacists that are actually stoking this violence within you know their gang members and and as you as you mentioned earlier, and they need to be also um, 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 brought to you know brought to justice and, and filed uh, filed um, um, uh, murder charges on them also because they're not for you know the uh, you know, black people or brown people you know they, obviously you know they're and, and the first one that they decide to kill is, is especially the uh, the brown people you know and and and, and you know they I mean it's like um, uh, they hate their own kind, you know what I mean, and okay. and they also, ha- you know, and they also, you know, pull a trigger on on black people. But those 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 guys need to be flipped. I think uh, what I what I th- think is at the time of before they hire them, they need to actually see, you know, really really look at the background and find out, you know, what the mentality is because a lot of them are actually gang members. In other words, their their mind is 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 already there. They got hatred, you know, and they got hatred for. For uh, like I said, black people and brown people, so we need to probably uh, uh, start up a, a plan of action to start actually flushing all all of them, white and brown, out of the department. You know, uh, you know it takes it takes a while to actually uh, you know draw up a plan uh, a plan of action to get those to get the, to get that uh, uh, those those uh, uh, cr- uh, criminal cops uh, out of you know out of uh, out of the department. Yeah, and, I like uh, I like that phrase, criminal cops. Yeah, I think that's oh, oh yes, that's very yes. descriptive. Yeah, and you know the thing about it, I feel like it, it a lot of it will have to come from the Department of Justice because it's hard for these um, departments and local prosecutors to yeah. really be thorough. It's like you need an outside force that's that's not exactly. tainted by the local political um, power struggles. Circle. Yeah, circle. Exactly. absolutely. And, and, Appreciate your and insights. I think yeah. I think we I think we need uh, the federal the federal government to actually step in the yeah. FBI, uh, you know, the, the Department of Justice, and they need to come in and 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 actually 
uh, get rid of those gang members that are, you know, they're, they're, they're not cops. They're killers. I mean, they're gang members. Yeah. I mean, and, can and, we have a can we have a tattoo check? I mean, to when you, you know, when you have your whatever, your annual review for the sheriff's department, we have a tattoo check in Vallejo. They have to have a badge check because apparently they get a dent in their badge for every person they they kill. Um, right. And they right. they have a gang over there. Anyway, uh, anonymous, it's it's, it's uh, great let, to talk let, to you. Let, I appreciate just, the call. Let me just say, let me just say one thing. Yeah. Um, I, I think that these these all these the the road cops and criminal uh, cops that are committing all these murders, I think they should be held jointly and several severally. And in other in, in other words, don't let the county pay for their for their murder. You know, because the county gets all this money from the federal government to commit the murders and kill people, innocent people. So what I'd say is those cops that are actually committing the, the, the murders go after their assets, go after their, their, their everything, you know, whatever they have, uh, houses, everything, you know, what they got. Uh, in other words, sue them also. Uh, right. Make them personally responsible. Personal, yeah. be spot liable and responsible. Right. And I think that would stop. That would, that would make them think twice before they pull that trigger on an innocent black or, or, or brown person got it thank you going to rich on the 14 freeway morning rich hey good morning girlfriend good morning front page family hey i, I was just ran across an article about um this brother that went down to columbia and uh he retired and he went down there and he put his little money up he bought a restaurant and a apartment building but he didn't go through um he slipped up a little bit he didn't go through a a realtor or a, a lawyer or something to get the deed and he ended up murdered and i thought that was kind of weird you know the guy you know he goes down to a foreign country and he didn't speak the language he didn't learn spanish and i thought that was weird and he supposedly had a girlfriend and she's supposed to have been the translator but it just seems very mm, weird yeah know, so very it weird. seems ill-advised i didn't read that story but I think any country you're going to move to, you got to have, you got to do your research. You don't just move. Yes, I mean, yeah. I am a big proponent of re retiring in Africa, and I know several people that have done it or are working on doing it. Mm -hmm. But you got to do some research. I mean, you yeah. don't just show up and start slinging up. cash around. You <laughs> yeah, he gave the guy a check, and they, they didn't even give him a, a contract. He never even got like a, any kind of contract saying that he received money. He didn't get a money. deed. He's he didn't get a deed. He don't even I mean, know that. Sorry, but he's yeah, but he didn't even dumb. he didn't even know if that guy was the real owner. You know what I'm that's saying? That's what I'm he saying. You're him, an idiot. You wouldn't do that in the United no. States. No, and he gave him a lot of money too. He gave him two hundred and like ninety thousand mm. dollars. Okay, you so had, what's your what's your bottom line here, Rich? Uh, family, most be of aware, us aren't going to make that dumb move. Oh, here's yeah, two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Be aware and learn the language of the country you're moving to, or go to one that's speaking English. That's all I got to say. Just be careful, family. Have a great day, Dominique. Yeah, go to Ghana. They speak English. <laughs> go to go to Tan uh, most you know, most countries have a even if English isn't their official language, they have a lot of folks that do speak English. I don't know that I'd be moving to Colombia anyway if you're like, hmm, massive cartel action is this really of course if you got family there, if you speak the language as you say, you have a job that's different. Anyway, if this guy had 250000 in cash, ain't no telling what was going on with him. Daphne from Inglewood, Jumbo. Hola. Hola. I want to say much kudos to the anonymous Chicano. Um, he, he was right on, and I hope that everyone heard what he had to say. We forget that the police officers have conferences and they have uh, conventions and they all get together and they say we are bogged down with this video that we have to have to our chest if you watch what happens is that they move a lot and then they'll say stop fighting stop fighting but way right. in the back you'll hear the, the, the victim say i'm not moving i'm I, i'm i'm standing here i'm not moving and that's how they're getting around 
shooting because everybody who doesn't know anything about this realize, thinks that the police are doing what they're supposed to do. In these conferences and in these conventions, this is what they're teaching these officers to do. And it's happening all over. Much kudos to that, that anonymous because he is right on. And what, what they fail to do is there's a training officer. We need to find out how many officers are shooting by this one training officer. Because once they leave the academy, they are assigned uh, a training officer. And we have a lot of these good officers that are going through the academy and really want to do good work. But when they get with these assigned bogus, uh, racist training officers, there is nothing that, that they can do. They have yeah, to leave. And it's also the system. I mean, let's not just, you know, let's not just put it only on the individual. I think you're right. There's plenty of people that go in with good intentions, and there are even plenty of people that are inside of forces doing good work in the ways that they're able. But we have to, exactly. that's why we have to make systemic changes because. You know, if you are in a system that is set up not to help a community, your individual help becomes overshadowed and in sometimes becomes twisted into the opposite of what it was meant to be. Exactly. And I want to say, Chicano me baby is what they used to say. And uh, I really would like to meet that guy because he is of the same um, possibly age that I am. And um, he is right on. So thank you for allowing him to speak because he spoke honesty. And thank you for allowing me to continue to say what I want to say. But check out the training officers once those uh, young people go through the academy with good thoughts. Yeah, I think that's right. I mean, Derek Chauvin was a training officer, lest we forget. Ross from L.A., it's on you. Morning, Dominique. Hey, uh, I'm, I'm calling in to piggyback off that Chicano dude just uh, called in. Hey, like yes, the sir. sheriff over there, they was bad money. The white deputies, the Latino deputies, they was bad money on whether the brothers was going to uh, outdo the Mexican dudes or Mexican dudes was going to outdo the brothers. Because I was still in high school when that was going down, right? And uh, my partner, his sister, was a dispatcher for the century sheriff. And she was coming back telling us to watch out because of what was going down up in there. And, like, we was having shootouts over here every other night. It was shootouts going down over here every other night behind this man because they were stoking the fire. Wow. Yeah, it, 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 it's, 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 it's really, it's really cold-blooded. Like, it, it cooled down a lot. Let me tell you, it was so ugly over here. And, uh, like, by me by me having, like, four brothers and my brothers being well-known in the neighborhood and stuff, the Mexican dudes left me alone. But, like, when I was in school, I got into squabbles with the Mexican dudes at Fremont because they was with that madness. So we were getting squabbles at school behind it. And uh, um, then we started getting the word that the uh, sheriff was stoking the fire on me. Yeah. So I, live in the sheriff, I live in the sheriff's district. And uh, they were stoking the fire on that. So, Ross, what do you think ought to be done to purge the criminal cops, particularly in the sheriff's department where we have these gangs? What do we do first, to get uh, gangs out of law enforcement? First, I would like to see them get rid of Bill and Waver. I wish McDonald's Hello. still would have been there. Yeah, I, wish right. McDonald's, I wish McDonald's would have still been there. I told everybody to vote for McDonald's and uh, nobody mm -hmm. wanted to vote for him. Nope, we did I, not, but I, you were right. And so, like, right now, it's kind of, like, kind of cool. But, like, the guy said, the Latino deputies, I see them, like, like the men 13, they'll line them up on the ground, like, in the rain, make them take their shoes off and stuff, and uh, then take their shoes, throw them out in the middle of the street and tell them to get on. Uh, they, uh, they like to jack your brothers up, and they want to squabble. Uh, they, their big thing with the brothers is, like, uh, once they get us pepper so, uh, uh, handcuffed, they want to pepper spray us and get us down and knee us in the face and stuff. That's what they be doing. See, people don't know what's going on out here. It's really, it's really, really bad. Really bad. It's so really, you're really saying bad. the MO that you observe is handcuff the black uh, so-called suspects and oh. then pepper spray. Pe pepper spray and beat them up. That's what Latinos do. They do. 
That's what you're saying. That's what the Latino sheriffs do. They pepper spray yeah, and do. beat up black men after they're handcuffed. Yep. I've seen them do it. So how do we get rid of how do we get rid of those gangs inside the sheriff's department? What needs to be done? OK, you're right. Get rid of Villanueva. What else? You got to start at the command structure. It got to mm. start right there. Start at the top, not at the ring. Yeah, you got to start at the command structure. The command structure is not going to do anything about it. It's not going to change. It got to start yeah. with them. OK, yeah. cause right now I'm, I'm learning this because I'm in the Marine Corps right now. So I'm learning mm -hmm. this right now because like, thank you for um, your service. I, I really wish they would, this, this would change because, you know, they, they were trying to recruit me. The sheriffs? Yeah, they were trying to recruit me. Mm -hmm. so I don't want to be a sheriff. I don't want to be LAPD. I'll be Why? in the United States because uh, of stuff I've seen the LAPD do. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't want to be a part of that. Um, you know, it's like um, I see LAPD get dudes on the ground and do worse to them than what happened to George Floyd, you know? So, by me being a young guy at the time before I went in the military and seeing all this stuff growing up, like, I've seen them. Like, I got older brothers. I got uncles that uh, they, they get in trouble, fight the police and all this stuff. And I've seen how they got treated. And we even told them one night, like, if you stop mistreating, he'll stop resisting you. And, they, and that's the part they don't get. You know, or they don't care. A, yeah, or they don't care. Yeah, but see, it's a magic word in there. If people need to really recognize the word stop resisting. People got, because yeah. they, they say it loud enough for the, for the crowd to hear, right? They say it for the so, cameras so that they can have yeah. that in court. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, they say, they say it's, it's just like the, the phrase, um, I feared for my life. Those are the two, yeah. like, magic phrases. I feared for my life, stop resisting. And yeah. the thing about it, Ross, if they cared, it, then you're right. They they would they would de-escalate. They don't. They don't de-escalate. They they escalate. And to me, that's like you know whether it's because you're on having a, a steroid rage or whether it's because you're on some you know macho trip or whether it's because you're just a, a psychopath um, responding to peer pressure on adrenaline. None of those are good excuses. You're a professional. Yeah, that's true. See, over here where I live at, it's an unspoken rule amongst all the brothers. After 10 o'clock, don't get caught on the street by yourself over here. Because oh, like the, the sun sheriff, downtown. <laughs> because of the sheriffs and F-13, it's an unspoken rule amongst brothers over here. Don't get caught on yourself by yourself on the street over here after 10 o'clock. Yeah, that's crazy. We got a sun downtown yeah, in L.A. is what you're telling yep, me. It's, yep, it's just, uh, yep, just like that. Yeah, well, like um, uh, Ross, I appreciate the conversation and thank you for your service, by the way. Are you welcome? Marie. And hope you'll call again. All right, look, it's Hot Topic Tuesday. That means you can call and talk about whatever is on your mind, and I'd love to hear it. Crazy story I got to share with you about um, the, I guess, the University of, of Pennsylvania messing with the bones of the people of people killed during the move bombing what this is like some ghoulish stuff more of your phone calls 520-KJLH 520-5554 love to hear from you add your area code on the front whatever is of interest to you that is what we will drill down on also there is a uh, beautiful um, African-American uh, young woman who is missing We'll have the latest on her case as well. It's Radio Free 102.3 KJLA.